what's good you guys i'm gonna do a little q a video now i'm not gonna answer all of your questions because there were many so if i miss some of your questions if i make another q a you can ask me then giggle gabble asks interesting username do you think all fixes are possible for every anagram subtype for example the possibility of a eight fixed five core one fixed seven core and nine fixed sx4 now of course i don't agree with that that's a weird mentality because if you really see how a subtype works subtype will describe a certain personality so to say that you can be any trifix which will create a certain personality profile it doesn't make any sense now does it kind of like sx4 describes a person who is much more aggressive assertive hateful and and more projecting of the hate on the external world punishing now i'm not gonna look at that and be like that fits that you know nine fixed personality it, it wouldn't that's not a nine fix it does not describe someone with characteristics of a nine so your subtype already many people even said that you should just ignore trifix and just use your subtype because that already kind of describes a certain personality profile but i don't know believe you can be any trifix a absolutely not you cannot be you cannot be sx8 with a five fix it does not exist ivy give tomb nice just for fun don't take this too seriously what's the most feelery thinker and mo most thinkery feeler thinkery feeler probably iei mainly because of the ni base and ti mobilizing try hardness and then being a 65 that's where i would go and most feelery like an ili maybe i don't know fi mobilizing maybe something like that i don't know neosis asks what's the difference between li so3 and sp3 one's a fucking snake the other is a good dad who wants to provide for his family. SO3 is much more selfish in its presentation. It wants to befriend people, get in better social positions. They're basically circle jerking. They're, ba they're basically circle jerking to status. That's that's kind of what they want. They want to climb the fucking social ladder. They want to be in a great position. They befriend certain people. They snake certain people. They're much more chameleonic. There's in general just more of that really classical vanity represented in the social three in uh, self-preservation three is different it's not about the position but about the work that they do not about the titles but about providing for the family about being a good dad being efficient being having very good performance in your work so it's not really about look at me i'm bragging with my open openly bragging with my positions and my status one loves me it's more that you know, again, you provide for your family. You do things, the right things, right? You do great in your company. It's not about the status. It's about the position and how well you do it. You're a provider. You're a good dad. You work really, really, really hard to provide and take care of those around you. That's very self-preservation three. SP3 is going to be more of the responsible individual who wants to be important by doing their, his work, providing for his family, having the resources stuff like that mainly because of the nature of anagram 2 they're always going to be externally focused towards the object right the object of the desired so they're looking outwards not inwards so again it's always going to be an extroverted type cognitively clearly possible asks does indulging frequently in the internet count as first physics no Engaging in the internet wouldn't count as first physics because well, how do you explain the fact that majority of the topology internet is filled with 4F basement dwellers, 5 cores? Probably indulging too much in the internet is more of a sign of weak physics than anything else because you're not engaging in the physical world as much. Now, is there su such a strong connection? Probably not because all types can indulge in the internet, probably for different reasons. But at the end of the day, it's true that higher physics people would be less likely to kind of be as obsessed. You know, if they have the opportunities opportunities to engage in the real world, they they would use that. LFVE versus FLVE differences and specifics knowledge about both of them, please. That is that question was by Upper Will. Now, the differences is, is an archetype. Think of it as LFVE is a geek who is very logical who will make make fun of you for being stupid and who will kind of basically enforce his opinion on the environment. 1L doesn't have to be a geek on the typology sphere. It can be a person who is ideological, who believes, again, in their ideologies, their dogmatic beliefs, and they kind of want to enforce it. 
that's still something that can happen with the type. FLVE is more of that, it's very different type. They're not really similar. FLVE is more of the charlatan snake who wants to climb the social ladder by kind of acting a certain way. They will more likely be adaptive. Andrew Tate is an example of FLVE. And here we see the difference, much more extroverted, much more focused on the ambition, on the drive, because the third will is the aspect that's very, you know, the, the weak aspect, the third placement. So they will try to compensate a lot of focus on willpower, right? Ambition, goals, be the best man possible, be super famous, have a lot of material goods, be rich. That's very, that's something you wouldn't really see from LFVE, but that's very classical behavior for FLVE. Basically, very th three core individual who wants to climb the social ladder to feel more worthy and, and have the admiration of others, and they will be more of a charlatan, you know? AC4889 asks, do you relate to eight core childhood? How do you or don't you relate to it? So I've read some things about the eight core, uh, eight core childhood from Naranjo, and I would say, yes, it's very relatable. Now, not in the areas of like social aid wanting to f his own mom. That seems really f weird. And I think that's the problem with Naranjo sometimes. My dude took too much like Rodian slips and that's kind of what happened, right? Or maybe he wanted to f his own mom and that's what happened. And all of the eight calls I know want to f their moms. So I'm not really sure what this guy was about. The childhood here was, in my case, a father who was more authoritarian, LSC SX1, much more, uh, you know, very choleric kind of individual, uh, anger, going against him and, and against the rules, I hated being controlled, so there was a big part of rebellion, which caused some issues in school or some other shit because I was maybe in some ways acting out because that's just how it goes, right? But yeah, Brainovaunun asks, I don't know how to even pronounce it, maybe I'm blind, what's your favorite psychosophy type? I don't really have a favorite psychosophy type. I, I really don't. Joshua Kakazuna asks, LII SX5, INTP, real? And I don't see how that would work personally. Now, I'm, I'm, I've seen some people discussing it, but I don't see how that would work with a TI base and FE suggestive type. I would suggest you to look into something else, maybe like an ILI. You seem four fixed, so I don't know. Look into something like that. Either way, don't use MBTI, bro. Like, it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. Just stick to Jung. But LII SX5, to say the least, that's still sus. That's very sus. It's a very sus combination at the very least. Supra asks differences between different socionics types within the same anagram type. ILE SP7 is going to be that typical degenerate who kind of doesn't do shit with his life and engages in such hedonistic weird behaviors that you think he's a that's gonna be very ILE SP7. Basically, a fucking degenerate, most likely an alcoholic. I've seen many SP7 ILEs, most of them, majority of them were fucking alcoholics. The LIE SP7 is gonna lean more into that almost SP3 esque behaviors. Much more hardworking, obsessive to gain upper hand. Think Lou Bloom. That's a much better example of an LIE SP7 to me because you see that constant improvement, constant application of knowledge, constant trying to get better, climb the ladder, take as much as they c he can, lie to people, con people. The ILE SP7 is probably more like Tywin, right? The midget, the fucking dwarf from uh, Games of Thrones, that's more like that. Artifice Predators, I don't know how to even pronounce this shit. What got you into typology and why do you like it? I was interested in psychology even before that. I was a bit interested in psychology, um, loved labels, so I came into this one MBTI server and I was talking to the people. So the people instantly said you and ENTP, right? Because I was witty, I was provocative, the debater. So the fucking uh, MBTI layman proved that they don't know shit about anything, did type me as an ENTP and I typed myself as an ENTP. I was hooked into just categories, right? Systematic application, always something that can be explained in your behavior and the way you think it can be categorized in some systematic way. That's why I really appreciate about typology because you do the same thing. In typology, you do the same thing. You see a bunch of behaviors and I think it's helpful, right? You can understand it better. I just like, for example, if I met you and you were a feeler, I'll just make fun of you for being a feeler. That, that was that was good, right? If you were, you know, I don't know, sensing type, I would make fun of you. It will, it helped me deal with people. Sophia Durant asks, what's the difference between EFVL and FEVL? If you could emphasize one E3V and one F3V. Very different. 
1F3V is more of that boy gaining some physical satisfaction. Again, this person is someone who places a lot of importance on his sensations, right? They're more of that cosplay adaptive boy who wants to fuck you and your mom. Now, 1E e and 3V is cancer, right? That's like, this is the like super spurging, not giving a fuck element. What they feel is what they feel and that's it, that's the reality. Combine that with 3V, you get a very unstable individual who pr prioritizes their own feelings over your feelings, over anyone's feelings. So you combine that with 2F, they will act out even physically and fuck you up because they want to, because they felt like it. With FEVL, it's a bit different because they're 2E. So they're much more charismatic and more outwardly focused. So they do look at your feelings and they want to manipulate them and kind of be more outwardly focused. The EFVL is the, pure spur it's the purest form of a spurg uh, in the true sense of the word. Without giving a fuck about the external environment or the emotional environment. He feels what he feels and that's the fucking truth. He's being real. He's being himself. And if you don't fucking like it, he's going to got you like a fish. That is something that will happen. Darka asks, differences between 3L and 3E, especially VFLE and VFEL. Because I'm an SP8 and I relate to both. It's a very common thing for SP8s I've seen. I have some friends who are SP8s and they also have this issue. VFLE is going to be much more expressive, much more outgoing, energetic, and not as inward focused. Not as, again, not as protective of self, not as guarded, not as wary. There's less self-protection from the emotional world. So much more expressive, much more spontaneous and bombastic people. That's literally the biggest difference. VFEL, on the other hand, is more serious. It's more, again, more suspicious, more wary, more, more self-protective, right? More cold, more emotionally harsh. Think someone like Billy Butcher or The Punisher. That's a good example of 3E. VFLE is more like Alonzo Harris, probably Vincent. Those would be more examples of that for E, just more spontaneous, energetic personality. That's the difference. Other people ask, what other anagram types are possible for INTJ besides SO6, right? Social 6. Um, SO5, Social 5. So go for that type and it's a juicy type. And Anubis asks, what's the best way to differentiate the fixation of pride and vanity, especially in social threes and twos? Someone made a really good post about it on PBD lately. The two core is much more eccentric, is much more spontaneous and more rebellious and aggressive. It's the biggest difference. Social three is much more focused on being controlled, sophisticated, image oriented, and not as eccentric. Overall, they're more likely to fit certain high status expectations of society, or standards that's the biggest difference the two core is not like that the two core can almost seem like a dejan they can seem more eightish so more eccentric because they don't really care to fit those external standards of society and that comes with the ego inflation they're much more aggressive and more likely to spurg at you whenever they feel like doing it because they feel justified in that the social three might be more careful with the image. They might they might now want to taint their image by acting out like that or acting in eccentric ways. Always a good example of social three to me. And someone like Andrew Tate. So what do you see here? Would you ever confuse him for a two core? Never. Because you don't see any... There's just so much focus on being competent, being like successful alpha male, having money, being polished, being like organized, disciplined. Even look the way he talks. When he's having interviews with people, super like tries to like sit a certain way. There's so much presentation and focus on being polished. RPD00825 asks, what are some things that might, what as an 8 core, what are some things people might not expect from an 8? I would say this is going to be pretty obvious, but I would say that 8s are actually very loyal. They can be very loyal, caring and loving in people, you know, and I know it's kind of weird. Because when it comes to typing people, we do focus on the neurosis, on the on the negative aspects of the type. But because it's necessary, you know, stop jerking off to the positives. Because you, that's not how you type. Neurosis is negative. But if we talk about the positives of the type or things that people might not really hear about as much, at least on the side of Naranjo, is the fact that, yes, AIDS can be very caring and even gentle with someone they care about a love and very protective and loyal. Other people asks, what anagram would you have been if you could choose? Now, personally, I wouldn't want to change my anagram or like, you know, cause it's like, 
I like the way I am. I would not want to change. I think I'm based. So I wouldn't change it. But now if if maybe if it's my other life and I have to change it, I would probably be like an SX1 or SP7. I would go for one of those two types. SX1 because big fucking daddy dome, man. That's a big daddy motherfucking dome. SP7, probably because of that ENTP debate, right? And I have uh, seven figs, so it could work. It could work. TI Amos asks, least but not last, important, Constantine Keanu Reeves type. It's been a while since I've watched Constantine, right? I'm aware his type is an ISTP A Wing 9. We all know that type we all know that on PBD, PDB, PD and whatever the f ever. We all know that there when when you have a profile that's not mainstream, the typings are fucking cancer. The typings are shit and everyone knows it. That's why all the people on Reddit fucking crying. No one can no one knows how to type on the website. It's because you're visiting non-mainstream typings. Obviously, it's a bunch of fucking MBTI losers trying to type. I get that. I think he might be like an LSI SX6, for example. There is that possibility he might be an LSI. One of those days, I might rewatch it or I might talk to some people if they've watched it and we can discuss the type. But we'll see. Maybe LSI, maybe LSI, maybe LSI 6 score, you know? Because, okay, where is SC base? Think about that. Where's SC base and where is Lust? You know, you really don't see it, right? He's not really an SP8, wanting to gain shit to his satisfaction and f people over uh, from the motherfuckers under the bus. No, that doesn't really sound like Constantine. Joshua Kakuza, again, right, asks, to what extent do you think neurodivergency makes it hard to type someone? I think that's the future of typology. To integrate it, that into typology. Enneagram has done a lot in the mental illness, personality disorder side, and it's very impressive. Seeing how things like ADHD and autism affects different types. Now, I'll tell you this. Enneagram does that, and many people get sweaty. Many people start fucking crying. Me, me. Uh, you, you should they start crying because they believe like mental illness has nothing to do with categories or like like types and if you really understand personality disorders or you understand Naranjo's takes on it and why there is overlap it's simply a manifestation an extreme manifestation of one's neurosis that's all it is autism and neurodivergency obviously will impact things and make things a bit more difficult but there's also the fact that some types lean more into it than others I genuinely don't, like, I cannot imagine an SEE SX2 with autism, with, like, full-blown autism. I don't see it. It's simply not in the cards of that individual to have autism. You know, same way SP6 is not going to have ASPD. Same thing. It's simply not in the profile of the personality to develop a certain way to have those kind of predispositions. It just doesn't happen. So in my opinion, yes, it does make things a bit more difficult because autism is a spectrum and you can be many different types. I have autism. Same with ADHD. There's ADHD is very common uh, among high NE valuers. But even high SE values, like SE bases, ADHD is common. But you can still draw connections. You can still draw patterns through all of those different things. Uh, I'm going to make a second Q&A sometime later. I'll let you guys know. Anyway, ciao.